Did it do it broly? I said to do it broly because no one can do it quite like you. That's why I said do it broly because you are broly so great. I love this movie. All right, that's that's about enough of that. Uh, the bit's over. Thank you, Poke Mixer, but I got it from here. An amendment has just been created by the Iron Nancy V, and it states that if you are either A, a Dragon Ball fan, B, a Dragon Ball Z fan, C, a Dragon Ball Super fan, D, a Dragon Ball GT fan, or E, all of the above, or F, all of the above except for Dragon Ball GT, then you must go see the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie because oh my word was that movie amazing. <laughs> and even if you're not all that familiar with the Dragon Ball franchise, I still believe that you could go into this movie and not be completely lost and also have a really fun time with it. Because the action, the comedy, the music, all of it bundled together makes the movie a really enjoyable experience. Also, this movie does catch you up on like the most important events that have been happening in Z and Super, and it also starts at the beginning of basically all of Dragon Ball. And I almost forgot to mention the art style, bro, which is phenomenal. Go see this movie. By the way, now I'm moving on to spoilers. And the way that I'm going to do this spoiler section is I'm just going to say a few things about Act 1, 2, and 3, and then I'm going to close out the video. So, starting off with Act 1, which is basically all of Planet Vegeta as well as Broly's Exile. Now, this act had me a little bit worried because I was afraid that they was going to degrade the savagery of my man's Bardock, which they did do a little bit, but I gotta say, I sort of like this rendition of Bardock more than the old one, because the old one was fighting against Frieza because Frieza had killed his entire squad, and so he wanted revenge, but this Bardock in the Broly movie is fighting against Frieza because he doesn't want Frieza to find his son, he's fighting to save his bay wife, shout out to Ginei, and he's also fighting for his entire race. And in this movie, Bardock also holds off the supernova longer than the old version of himself did. I'm just saying. I also really liked King Vegeta's reasoning behind sending Broly away, because it wasn't just, oh, Broly is stronger than my son, so he has to leave. No, it was also because somehow King Vegeta knew that the power inside of Broly was going to make Broly go crazy. And then later on in the movie, when Broly does start to go crazy from power, it's cool to see Paragus start to question his motive for revenge. Because in the end, King Vegeta was right. And speaking of later on, it's time to switch to the second act. I'm well aware that I left out tons of stuff, but I'm not trying to make this video 30 minutes long. Now, this second act starts with Chell and whatever that old dude's name is. I don't know. Those two people finding Broly and Paragus, and it ends at the destruction of the glacier. And this act is basically all action, okay? And the action, while it is good, can be hard to keep up with sometimes. Like, I had to activate my Sharingan just to figure out what was going on in some scenes. Also, wait, I just realized. I said Chell. Is it Chell or Chelle? Or are both pronunciations wrong? Either way, I'm, I'm just gonna stick with Chele. Chele is Bay, okay? She saved Broly, she came in with the clutch every time that she needed to. But back to Broly though, because I wanna talk about his first transformation and how it's basically Super Saiyan 4. Like the way that they explain it in the movie is that Broly is harnessing the power of the Ozaru, but without actually turning into one, right? Like he's getting all the strength, the speed, and he's getting the rage and the primal instinct. And if you compare that to how Goku gets Super Super Saiyan 4 in GT, you can see that they're very similar. And with all that said, it's time to move on to Act 3, and I'm just gonna brush past these two points. First, the legendary Super Saiyan transformation, or rather, how Broly becomes the legendary Super Saiyan is quite funny because it has to do with Frieza killing Paragus, and then Frieza gets bodied after Broly turns into the legendary Super Saiyan, and then Goku and Vegeta trying to become Gogeta, completely hilarious because they turn into what's it called, Venku? But now onto the main attraction, okay? Gogeta Vegeta versus Broly. And the only, well, actually I have two critiques. The first critique is why did you guys show off so much of this fight in the trailers? If you had just taken out a few scenes from the trailers, it would have made this fight so much more entertaining. And the second critique is why in the world is the music so low? You gotta crank that mess up so that everybody's jamming out and the hype is at peak.
speak. Like, could you imagine if during the Jiren versus Goku, Frieza, and Android 17 fight, they were playing Ultimate Battle as low as the Gogeta versus Broly OST? It would have been a travesty. Aside from those two things, the fight was dope. But also, this fight made me feel bad for Broly, because Broly was getting hammered by Gogeta. But when you had Chile in the background with the old dude, and they were talking about how none of this is on Broly because he's just crazy, he's lost his mind, and you got the powerful voice acting from Vic Manana? Bro, when it was all mashed together, I was like, Gogeta, chill out a little bit. He's got the mind of a child that's been manipulated by Frieza and his dad. There's absolutely no need to kill him, so please, just calm down. Luckily, though, Chelly and the old dude save Broly. They teleport him back to the planet that he was exiled to, then Chelly and the old dude go to that planet, and they're all friends now. When Goku shows up, and he's like, hey, guys, I know I almost tried to kill you, but my bad. We're friends now. Also, Broly, call me Kakarot. Although, I don't know why Goku was telling Broly that he can call him Kakarot, because Broly and Goku had never met before Earth. So Broly shouldn't know that Kakarot is Goku's Saiyan name. But nonetheless, shout out to the old movie, so it's dope and it's great, and I'm glad that it's in the movie. But anyways, thank you all for watching this video. I hope that you all enjoyed it, and if it is a little bit all over the place, that's my bad. It has been a minute since I have done a review, but make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and there's really only one way to end out this video, if you know what I'm thinking. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Hopefully you are. <laughs> Yeah, that's enough of that. Bye. <laughs>